When you hear the word milk, most people think of cow's milk. But not everyone can have dairy. So we've dedicated a whole episode to showing you how to make milk alternatives at home. When you can't have dairy, like me, soy is the most usual alternative, but another alternative we like to have in our house is oat milk. So today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple, straightforward oat milk. For that we're going to be using one and a half cups of oats, just the normal rolled oat variety that you get in the supermarket, and some water. So put the oats into a bowl, cover them with water, soak them overnight, and then in the morning we're going to blend it up and make a delicious oat milk. After they've been soaking overnight, pop them into a bowl, another bowl, give them a bit of a rinse, and then into the blender with 500 mils of water and blend it up. You also might like to add a little bit of flavor to your oat milk. You can use some medjool dates or some yummy vanilla, which is, you know, my favorite. So if you don't have enough milk bag to strain your oat milk, we're gonna show you some alternatives. And one is using a coffee plunger. Now, this does take a bit of muscle power, so get those arms ready for an excellent workout. All right, let's go. There <laughs> we go. I think I got it now. Oh gosh, I got a dent in my hand. So if that's a bit much of a physical, physical workout for you, then what you can do is just drain it off into a bowl. Shouldn't sing on camera. You can use a normal household strainer or one that's a little bit more fine, depending on how you like your oat milk. So there we have it, yummy oat milk. It can probably taste a bit bland, but that's why you put it in your coffee or in your cereal. Oh, but especially on your porridge, it will taste yum. What if you can't have gluten, dairy or soy? What are you gonna have on your cereal? I guess rice isn't just for weddings. Good luck with that, Lisa. Okay, so today I'm going to show you a really quick rice milk recipe. There's only four ingredients and it doesn't take very long to make at all. So what we have is one cup of brown rice that's being cooked, half a cup of soaked sunflower seeds, so you're going to soak them for about six hours and that just helps release the nutrients from the seed. And I should just let you know that when you soak, that's the starting volume. So put half a cup into a bowl of water, cover them well with water because they're going to swell and expand. And so your final volume is going to be more than half a cup. But if you start with half a cup, that's how much I put in. And lastly, I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of vanilla for a little bit of flavour. Okay, so we're going to make one litre final volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about half of the fluid now and blend it up because if you've got just a regular sort of blender, unlike the really high speed blenders like Glenys and Haley use, I find if you add too much fluid too soon, sometimes it just doesn't blend up quite as smoothly. So the trick here, just add a little bit of the fluid first, get it pureeing up nicely and then add the rest of the liquid. I've made this with sunflower seeds because I find when you add the sunflower seeds to the brown rice, it actually gives a whiter appearance to the final milk. The other thing is it adds a bit more of a creamy flavour, but if your diet doesn't permit that, just leave it out. Basically the more that you blend it and puree it all up, the creamier your final milk alternative is going to come out. So once it's been well blended and it looks nice and smooth like this, you're ready to strain it through a nut milk bag. This one here is actually fantastic because it's got the seams on the outside. So if you've got one that doesn't have the seams on the outside, my handy tip is to turn it inside out because it can be quite frustrating. All the little tiny bits of the seeds or the grains get caught in the seams and it's really tricky to clean. So it just saves you a little bit more time afterwards. To set it up, it's really simple. Just get a bowl and put your nut milk bag around the edge of the bowl as much as you can, and then you just pour it in. You might have to do it in two lots. 
Also, make sure you've got clean hands. So, just keep going until you've squeezed as much out of there as you possibly can. So there you have it, your own homemade rice milk. Now, I wouldn't keep it in the fridge for more than a day or two. And if you see any sign of pinkness, throw it away. The other thing to notice is the next day after it's been in the fridge, you will find maybe some layers separate and there'll be a more watery layer and then the top layer. That's not a problem. That's just the different parts of the rice and the seeds coming out. So just put the lid on, shake it up and then pour it out. One thing that your homemade dairy milk alternatives don't have is any added nutrients. A lot of your commercial milks, you might not realise, are often fortified with things like calcium, sometimes vitamin D, sometimes B12. So if your healthcare practitioner needs you to be watching your calcium intake, what you could do also is buy some powdered calcium supplements. You can find them in your health food shops. Mostly they're produced from plant sources and sea vegetables. The dosages are on the container or you just discuss it with your healthcare practitioner. And so that's just another way to try and make sure that you're not missing out on any nutrition. So I'm just gonna go and make myself a milkshake. A raw milk option? I'm not gonna try this one again until I've seen how Hayley does it. I got a boo-boo. Ouch. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make fresh coconut milk. Now there are three variations of how you can do this. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do it using a young Thai coconut. You can also make it using a mature brown coconut. I will also be showing you how to make it using dried desiccated coconut and coconut water. So first I'm going to shave off the tip using the cleaver. I'm just going to be using the bottom point of the cleaver and I'm going to use that to tap around the top of the coconut. Um, to search for those soft parts. Now I've just finished tapping all around the edge and the coconut is ready to open. Now this is a really juicy coconut. This is the coconut flesh which is going to provide the body and the creaminess to the coconut milk and the coconut water inside is going to provide the liquid base. How to tell if your coconut is off. You want to be looking for a nice white flesh so this is what you're after. If your coconut shows any purple, pink or brown, your coconut is off and it's unsafe to drink, so you should discard it. It's a good idea to pour your coconut water through a sieve and this will ensure that you don't get any woody bits in it. So I'm just gonna scoop out the flesh with a spoon and that's all you'll need. And just place that into the bowl. To give your coconut milk a whiter appearance, it's useful to remove any of the woody bits from the coconut with your hands and then you can peel the rest using a peeler. So I'm just going to put everything into the blender now. So I've got the coconut flesh and the coconut water. Now this is going to make roughly 500 ml of coconut milk. I'm also adding some vanilla bean just to give it a nice smooth flavour. Alright. It's totally up to you if you want to strain the milk through a nut milk bag. However, I like to do this as it removes all the lumpy bits and it gives a smoother consistency. So I'm just going to squeeze all the liquid out. Can get a bit messy. So that's your fresh coconut milk. Now I'm going to show you how to make another variation using the desiccated coconut and blending that up with some warm water. You could either use dehydrated coconut water powder or pre-bottled coconut water or just filtered water. It does take a bit longer than blending the fresh coconut milk. This is generally because the dried coconut is a lot harder to break down. Now I'm just going to pour this into my bowl using a nut milk cloth to strain it. So this is your end product. This is a great milk alternative to use in your smoothies, curries, cereal, or even hot drinks. Now I just store mine in an airtight container in the fridge. It probably lasts around three days. If you start to see any signs of discoloration, 
best to throw it out. If you have a sweet tooth, there are a variety of raw and natural sweeteners that you can add to the coconut milk, such as coconut nectar, coconut sugar, or dates. However, I like to just keep mine simple. Another dairy-free milk option? What's left for Glennis to use? These guys are nuts! Today I'm going to make almond nut milk. I'm just going to pop my almonds into my blender. These have been soaked for at least eight hours. This helps remove the tannin and before you use them, you need to thoroughly wash them under some clean water until the water runs clear. To this, I'm going to add in my filtered water, a pinch of salt. Again, I've chosen Himalayan salt, some honey to sweeten, and the seeds of a vanilla pod. Blend this for about a minute. This is really noisy, guys. A handy hint for your used vanilla pods is to dry them out on the kitchen sink or outside. You can put them together in a little mortar and pestle or in a high-speed blender with a little bit of vodka, just enough to make a paste. And then you have your very own vanilla paste that you can keep in the fridge for three to six months. This is perfect. You see it's just slightly frothy on the top. If you don't have a nut milk bag, the alternative is you can use a sieve and some very fine muslin placed over the top. And if you'd like to refer to our recipe book, it'll have all the instructions there on how to care for your muslin. I'm just going to help the milk through. And now that most of the liquid has disappeared into the bowl, I'm going to pick up the four sides of the muslin cloth. and start squeezing the milk out. Keep squeezing until it's almost dry. It's ready to pour into our clean jar. This will keep in the fridge for up to three days. I've used honey to sweeten this almond milk. If you prefer, you can use an alternative sweetener. Don't throw your pulp away. This is almond meal. So we need to dry it and it will store in an airtight container for three months. If you've got a dehydrator, place your almond meal onto one of the drying racks. And if you don't have a dehydrator, you can pop your almond pulp onto a tray, spread it out and put it in the oven after you've cooked something when it's cooling down and leave it to dry. So there you have it, four different dairy-free milk options for you to have with your cereal, your milkshakes, or your hot drinks. Now it's time for you to give it a go. Let us know what you think. And if you want to stay up to date with all the latest, head on over to the website and fill in your details to receive our newsletter. Have oh, I got something in my teeth? Okay. <laughs> Depending on how you like your nut, yeah, oh, said nut milk. <laughs> What are we saying again? Okay. Oh, I'm work out, I'm work out, I'm work out, yeah. Why is my stomach grumbling? Do you know how much that much is? <laughs> really help you. I'll start again. What do they do? What do they help you do? Sieve the milk. Okay. Woo! <laughs> Squeeze gently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Now they're a frick. Yeah. For my almond, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you'd think this would be so easy, wouldn't you? No, hmm, it's in. No, oh, yes.